what play does is it creates in people a, a, a reason for them to want to engage. You see people transform through play. Like you see their bodies transform themselves. You see their spirit transformed. To be at play is, is an experience. You feel ideas of freedom, of being able to be creative, to make choices, um, to, try, to try out things, to experiment, to explore. I actually think it's a kind of state of being that when you, when you are at play, you're, you're actually in a very different state of mind. Um, you have a kind of openness about, about ideas, um, definitely when you're at play with other people, there's an openness to what does it mean to be with these people in this space. You're uh, communicating with them, you're trying to understand, well, how can I relate to them? How can we do something together? You're always kind of pushing and pushing and exploring and feeling, rather than a really kind of closed rule-bounded space where you're nervous about suggesting something or trying something or, take, or taking a next step. So that, that sort of openness of that space feels incredibly important for people that are collaborating and are trying to engage in what-if questions around what they might do together, what solutions might be to things, um, how they feel about each other. It's a very, very human experience. And I think it's actually one of the most fundamental human experiences. And it's why it's uh, sort of sad to me that it has fallen out of favor a little bit in the adult world as something that really matters and is really valuable. When you look sort of historically at the role of play, um, it's actually a practice space, right? So we, we often as kids play because we're, we're just trying to get better at something. Um, when you look at animals, young animals, that they're playing to get better, right? They're practicing. Um, and when you practice, you start to build confidence that, that oh, in fact, you can. You can do that thing that you actually couldn't do before. And in particular for teenagers, that the notion of having confidence about being able to do something and having um, the sense that uh, it's possible for you is a huge, it's a huge, huge thing. What you'll see with kids is they will light up, they will actually start to talk. So a lot of teenagers are not super expressive and super talkative to adults. Um, and you will see them driven to want to share with you what it is that they're figuring out, what it is that they're learning, what it is that they're making, and that they, they, they really are proud of it and that they see themselves able to do it. There's this thing that happens in elementary school where their kids are, when they're really little, they're always at play. It's actually the way that you learn, and it's understood. You let kids play, you let them explore, and then suddenly um, play only happens on recess. It becomes cut off and cordoned off as a time in the day where you go out, and then you can do it, and then you come back in and you're not doing that anymore. So then it becomes an activity. Um, and then as you get older, they become, play gets embedded in objects, like video games. Um, and so then it's not even a time of day, but it's some object that you pick up, and then it can activate play in you if you're engaged in this thing. Um, and so what I feel like we lose as we move through that sequence is the, the frame of mind that we have when we're young, which is play is just the way that we experience the world. It is a frame for, for everything. I always think about a, a space that's been designed with play in mind and to really support that, that kind of way of being and that way of thinking 
is that it feels like a space that has been designed for you to be successful. When you begin to imagine classrooms or learning spaces that have play embedded in the fabric, what you see when kids enter those spaces is that they feel that they're part of it and that it requ actually requires their participation to make that space work rather than they just happen to be kids sitting in the space. But they actually are in demand. If they're not there, it's not going to work at all. I think it, it can be very empowering for kids, right, to, to, to understand that, wow, this experience isn't going to work if I'm not part of it. It actually requires me to have ideas. It cares that, that I do have ideas that I can contribute. Um, and that can be uh, incredible for kids to feel as if the system doesn't, it, the system doesn't go without them. A lot of the, the space that adults get into get, gets into an identity about being a productive citizen, about uh, needing to make money, to take care of a family, and it becomes about a set of responsibilities rather than about a way of, uh, a way of engaging your soul in the world. And what does it mean to be a person that has those responsibilities but engages in ways gauges in ways that they are joyful responsibilities and that there is a real spirit, a real human spirit in how, how we go about things.